Smashamaniacs. Gearheads. Welcome to the Geo Gearheads. This is episode 342. We're talking about Cash Tour tonight. If you've just joined us for the first time, go listen to the other 341 episodes. We'll wait and then come on back. No, just kidding. We are a weekly show that talks about geocaching and geolocation games. And tonight, we've got some great guests with us. And in fact, first of all, let me introduce the creator, the genesis of the Geo Gearheads, Daryl W. Four. Well, thank you. It's good to be back and good to have you like in your studio where we can actually see and hear you. And there are no pageant kids running around making noise. <laughs> this, this is very yeah. interesting. If, if you have pageant kids, we'll be calling the cops on you. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please do. They, they should not be allowed. <laughs> Patching kids should be disallowed no matter what universally done <laughs> be a kid go out and play in the dirt oh my oh my oh my anyway uh, so we are talking about uh cash tour.no tonight again and we just talked about it uh what about nine weeks ago with uh plato attic who's coming back to the show welcome back thank you and we also have our reagan joining us today Thank you for uh, joining us. This is your first appearance on the show. It is my inaugural show. So you, you've been with us, I think, since show one. Because <laughs> I, I seem to remember getting emails like that early on. But yeah. this is the first time you've been on. Lurking. <laughs> <laughs> so only only 342 weeks to pull you out of that shell. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so, I'm shy this, fellow. Is this kind of like, you know, long time listener, first time caller? You got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but both of you are ambassadors for uh, cashtour.no. And if you haven't uh, the familiarity with uh, uh, Cash Tour, you probably want to go back to episode 333, nice and easy to remember. Plus, you know, we'll link to it in the show notes mm -hmm. and check out that one because that will give you the base of, you know, what the service is and how to use it. And uh, it, it's a really cool service that I still haven't really wrapped my head around, but it got even cooler today well not today but within the, in the last, last couple week. of weeks yeah. yeah uh so who wants to uh, talk about what that new development is that's really cool I'll, I'll jump in here quickly uh so i guess it was within the last week i don't remember the exact date uh we released the first official version of the cash tour app and so it's available for both ios and android uh, so you can find it in the Google Play Store as well as in the App Store. And it's it's an early version. If you look at the version number, it's not even a 1.0. Um, I think it's a 0.1. Um, but basically the idea here is, oh, we're, we're, we're hearing that it was last Friday. So yeah, within the last week. Uh, so the idea here is you still use the website to plan your geocaching trip to identify the geocaches that you want to target, the order in which you want to target them, and then using your iPhone, Android device, tablet, whatever it may be, you can download the trip. And what it does is it downloads the waypoints. And then you can use it to simply mark when you arrive at the caches, uh, and it will update the estimated time of arrival at each of the next waypoints. You could just use it as your list to see which one you're supposed to or you plan to target next. Uh, you can also link to your favorite mapping software. If you cache with your phone or your tablet, there are links to Google Maps or to Apple Maps um, to allow it to navigate you from wherever you currently are to your next waypoint. And if you live log your finds, you can actually link to your favorite geocaching app. On iOS, it supports the geocaching, the official geocaching app, as well as Cachely. Uh, my understanding is I'm not an Android person. My understanding is on Android devices, it will actually prompt you for any geocaching app that you have installed. And so you can link right to it and it'll take you right to that 
the cache page so you can do your live logging. Um, so yeah, so it's it's there. Uh, it's definitely continually in development. So keep an eye out for more versions of it. And really, I think one of the best features of it is it's it it works offline. So once you download that trip, which you would obviously need some sort of data connection for, the rest of it you can use without data. Which uh, I was driving back from Buffalo back to the DC area on what day was it? Tuesday. And AT&T apparently had a data outage that affected not everybody, but many people in Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, and Virginia, which would be exactly what I was driving through. So I had no data, but I still had that offline app. So I was able to know what my next waypoints were. So that was helpful. I know. I so cool. Yeah. I've used it for a couple of small trips here as part of, part of testing it. And the workflow is wonderful. When you tap a tap a cache, you get a tray that drops down. It has three icons. There's map, there's open, and there's arrived. And so you pop it down, you hit map, you get your little Google nav to wherever you're going. When you get there, you hit the back link out of iOS, out of the nav software. You're sitting in cacher. You tick the arrived button, and then you tick the open button. Cachely opens up, and you're ready to start navigating and walking to the cache. And when you back out of there, you're right back where you started, ready to do the next one. It's just a, such a smooth workflow. That's how things are supposed to work. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to actually getting a chance to try it out, but I haven't had a chance yet. Yeah. While we were talking. <laughs> I, I, I've had it downloaded. I just didn't have anything to load into it because, you know, it was Sunday or Monday that I discovered that it was out. And, you know, and I know um, Rich uses the uses his phone to do most most of his caching. I use a handheld GPS. So I'm using it really just to keep my waypoints in order and to check on the ETAs. Mm -hmm. So when I uh, I drove up to Buffalo last week, Thursday, and I decided to take the long way to go through Erie, Pennsylvania and get uh, Pennsylvania's oldest. And it's about an hour and a half to two hours from there to Buffalo. And so I was sort of keeping in mind that I still had another two hours to go after I finished that cache. And I had a bunch of caches in the Erie area because there are some virtuals and earth caches and challenge caches around there. And it was really nice to have that updated ETA feature. So I didn't have to sit there and pour over my printout, which gives you the, the time to, to each waypoint. I could just tap a button and see how much longer it was going to take me. And so I knew exactly when to sort of call it a night, uh, which I did much sooner than what my list would have had me call it, uh, which, <laughs> which was a nice plan. And, and at the bottom of the screen, there's a little green bar or red bar that says how many, how many minutes you're behind schedule or ahead of schedule. Yeah, oh. which is, that's awesome. <laughs> I, that was the best little uh, Easter egg that, that Tom Frey threw in there because, uh, I don't know. I mean, I have the Garmin Nuvi, right. And I'm always playing race the clock against myself. You know, <laughs> what, what time does it tell me I'm going to arrive when I start and how much have I managed to shave off that time by the time I get there? And so this provides me with another little treat <laughs> along those same lines. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I that was our that. breaking news. <laughs> And I think the show notes will have the links uh, to go and get it from the Google Play Store as well as the App Store. But it is searchable in both. Nice. There, it's in the notes. And because well, it's such a, a strange spelling for us in the US, it makes it easy to find it. Yes. Well, that's just the breaking news. We still have a show to do. I mean, that right there could have been the show. <laughs> we could say goodnight, folks, and have passed along good information. But we're not done yet. Right. Let's talk about tips. That's what we're here for tonight. <laughs> but first, I want to toss in an email we got from Limax that says, uh, I wanted to let you know that I used the cash tour this past weekend when I was finishing up the Hidden Creatures promotion. My reason for using it was due to a power trail of puzzle caches we have out here based on the World Series. Our Reagan will be familiar with these. <laughs> Uh, I ran into some interesting snags while working on it. For starters, let's say, uh, let me say that people who volunteer to ask questions are outstanding. My questions are usually answered within 10 minutes, which is unexpected. I first had trouble loading the caches into Cache Tour, mostly due to laziness on my part. 
Uh, it would have been easier if I had made them a list all their own rather than upload my entire solved puzzles list and then remove all that wasn't used. I got very adept at bulk deleting them, though. The second snag I ran into is when I tried to calculate the route for them. It turns out that 76 caches is way too much for, for it. I had to split up my trip into two sub trips, which uh, wasn't easy. My method was to copy the entire trip into the sub trip and then remove caches. I had to get help on how to find or how to calculate the route since it wasn't intuitive. Again, the people they have helping them came to my rescue. I ran into another snag with that, however. Uh, it did make an optimal route, but it was reversed from where I was going to start. I didn't see the button to reverse the entire list. When I did my first sub trip on my first day, I brought up the website on my iPad and proceeded through the list backwards. Also, I didn't see where you could mark off when you'd visited a cache, so I was keeping track in my head where I was. It wasn't until after lunch that I found the offline trip app. I, Android iOS had dropped. Surprise, uh, which I downloaded immediately. It proved to be much easier to use since we could mark off the caches as I visited them. When I was back the next day doing the second trip, I had found a way to start the list from where I wanted and was able to mark them off as I went. The snag I ran into on the second day had to do with a series of caches in the middle of my trip. It turns out they were all in the same park, and it was having me do them out of order since I had based it on a car trip and not a hiking trip. I ended up going off the order for a bit, then getting back into the order. Uh, I'll need to see if there's a way to combine car and hiking in on the same trip, or do I or I have to do more investigation of the caches first to see which ones need to be hiked to to make its own sub trip. All in all, doing a quick down and dirty method with it, I was able to use the tool effectively. I can see using this tool going forward for more official trips. And it's really great resource to look forward to uh, using it more in the future. Ooh, that was a bit from Limax, <laughs> but you know what? Uh, the fact that there was somebody there to answer questions within 10 minutes is absolutely spectacular. It's the advantage to having people both in the U.S. as well as over in Europe, because yep. when we're asleep, they usually are awake. And when they're asleep, we're usually awake, but they don't really sleep. They claim they do. They're up all the time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we we and, will... Sorry, we, go ahead, Rich. Uh, we will cover the uh, mixed hiking and hiking and driving in one of our tips tonight. Yeah. Fabulous. And, and actually, that email is a great email because I think it's a, what a lot of new users to Cash Tour experience, sort of the working through and the different snags. And I think a lot of our tips tonight are going to touch on a number of those points. Um, and we've sort of broken them down as, to j just general usage. And then as you go through your typical workflow, so that hopefully it'll resonate with people and, and things that they've been running into. Tom Frey in the uh, chat says that uh, they don't need to sleep in Norway. Well, particularly at this time of year where the sun doesn't even set. Right. No <laughs> darkness. Yeah. But come winter, really you sleep all here. the time. <laughs> <laughs> you just make up for it. It's really got to throw off your circadian rhythm. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. All right, so why don't we start off with the uh, Cash Tour Assistant, which is yeah. uh, one of those things that I'm told I really need to learn to use, and I've yet to actually make use of it. If there's any one tip tonight, which is our number one, this is it. You should. Don't delay. Go install it. <laughs> First thing you do, install the Cash Tour Assistant, which is a browser extension or plugin, depending on what you want to call it. Uh, the show notes tell you how to have links on how to install it. Essentially, it runs under Tamper Monkey as an extension that you then install. Now, why would you want this thing? Well, first of all, it integrates with geocaching.com and with the Project GC websites. And once you have it installed, you can go to a geocaching.com cache description. Look at that page. And there's a link over on the right that says, add to, send to cache tour. And up at the top, you've chosen which of your trips you're sending it to. And so you can just look at the page, drop it into your trip. Uh, if you take the map view up, you can click on a cache in the map view. The call out pops up and you can, there's a send to cache tour directly from there. So you can just walk down the maps, put this one in the trip, put the next one in the trip, put the next one in the trip. Just, I don't want to do that one. Um, that's really cool. And the same thing happens in the live map in Project GC. Now, if you 
go a little further once you've set your world up. Say you've set a starting point for your route and ending point, and now you're filling in the hole in the middle. Um, if you look at the trip in the map, then you will see a purple line on geocaching.com's map or on Project GC's map showing you the current route you're taking. And so you know you know how to follow along picking up caches along that route visually. That's kind of like IFR, I follow roads. Um, so it does help you add the caches in the right order. And you want to start, though, with your first and last. So you bracket your region that you're working on. The um, This works in computer browsers because it's a plugin. But it doesn't work well on mobile devices. And so I wrote two bookmarklets, which you can find out how to install from a link in the show notes as well. So if you install those bookmarklets, you can at least add caches to trips from the map and from the cache details page. So you're not out of luck. You can you can progress. You don't get the little purple line, but you know it's it's a browser bookmarklet. <laughs> and, and the other thing that you nice. can do with the cache tour assistant as well is you can actually add caches from somebody else's bookmark list mm -hmm. from geocaching.com. So you can go there and select the caches and send them over. And if you use virtual GPS on Project GC, you can create a virtual GPS. So you can draw your polygon send them to virtual GPS, and then send those over also with the cache tour assistant. Lots of options. So nice. um, let's talk about ordering your waypoints, because now you've got um, you've got a start and an end, and you've dropped some stuff down, down along the way you're going. Uh, it's really better to put them in as best you can in the order you plan to visit. Don't, don't randomly hop around, because you're going to have to work harder later. And besides, you're not going to drive randomly like that anyway. So try to put them in where you want. Uh, sometimes you're going to come back and the, you've got partial trip, and then you decide, oh, I want to go off to the side here and do this cluster of things over here because it's a geo art or whatever. Um, but I need to add them. How can I add them in the middle? Because by default, they are added at the end of the trip. If you double click an entry, you get a little blue line, and anything you add after gets inserted right after that line until you clear it off again. So you can stick things in the middle quite easily. Uh, once you've got things in there, if you say, oh, that's not quite right, you can just reach out with the mouse, grab the number, and drag that cache to the spot you want it in the list. So it's direct manipulation if you're in the browser looking at your list. Um, you can have Cache Tour optimize a route for you. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Um, just mention it in passing here as another way to get your waypoints sorted out in the order you ultimately want them to be. You want to talk about settings, Plato Addict? Sure. Well, before we get oh, to yeah. that, we oh, do have yeah. a question from the uh, live chat. DNF Magazine asked, what about caches that are on opposite sides of the road that you're driving on uh, have a uh, have to do uh, park and cross a busy road for parking grabs? Uh, that's a nice sounding feature. It sounds almost like what you'd want when doing a power trail, though, rather yeah. than just random events. Well, I'm thinking that the optimized route doesn't. No, work no, it for doesn't. That, it doesn't know side. It doesn't do side of route. right. So that's the kind of stuff that you'd still have to do manually. Yeah, it's an interesting feature, but it would have to assume that you're going to return on that road, which to get the other side sometimes. Right. Yeah, but yeah, that's something that you'd have to do manually, and it's still a great way to you know, plan the trips is you know manually going through and doing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I used to do that through uh, numbering on the bookmarks list. So I'm anxious to give it a shot here <laughs> and see if I can figure out how to make the uh, routes here and, you know, load them into the app. Cool. Let's hear about some cool settings. Oh, did we lose uh, Plato Addict? Uh, I don't know. I'm still here. Yep, oh, we lost her. Wait, so wait, you got two of her. Coming, we've cloned her. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about the uh, uh, connection problems at the beginning of the show, and I think we've jinxed it. Apparently, so. I got an. It's been disconnected due to an error. So, oh, right. oh, lovely. You're back. There's two of you now, though. Well, now one's a dog. I saw that briefly. <laughs> yeah, it, it it will go away on its own eventually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were just going to get into the uh, settings then. Right. So this is just another tip or something to keep in mind um, when you're setting up your account on Cash Tour and trying to make it work best with the workflow that you've established. And 
um, it, it's worth noting that there are various settings that you can manipulate and some of them are default. So we haven't really focused, we're not going to really focus on those, but we're going to focus more on the ones that you can uh, enable that are not set by default. And so what's important to know too, is that there are site-wide settings and then there are trip specific settings. And so if you're looking for something and you're in your trip and you're not seeing it, it's worth going and looking to see if it's site-wide or vice versa. So one of the um, big features that I really like is the ability for Cash Tour to see the cash notes that you have put in your geocaching.com personal cash note. And you do have to enable that. I don't believe that it is set on by default, and that is a site-wide setting. And then the advantage is that if you do print out templates, and we'll talk about those a little bit later, you can actually have it print those personal cash notes. So if you've put something in there based on, uh, well, when I was out in Oregon and I did GC12 and I completely screwed up the parking spot for it, I didn't have cell service. So when I got back to the hotel and figured out where I should have parked, I left myself a nice little note. The next time you're in Oregon and you want to go after this cash, park here. <laughs> um, and so that would have been printed out right on my trip template and, and things along those lines. So it's, it's nice to know that you can turn that feature on. Of course, you don't have to. Um, you can also, if, if you like to live log or spend some time at each cache, maybe you trade swag or something like that, you might want to increase the administration time per cache so that when it's computing your ETA, it knows that you like to spend a little bit longer than, than others might at that cache. Um, something that I enable is by default, your waypoint list will have a GC code, but it's not clickable. You can actually turn on a setting which will make the GC code clickable so that if you click it, it will then open it up in a new tab or new browser window, depending on your browser settings, on geocaching.com. So if you actually want to see it in the page. It's not necessary because you can click a little info button and get the entire page right there. But if you wanted to open it on geocaching.com, you could as well. Um, I also enable a, a feature that allows me to see more information about each waypoint. So it shows me the DT rating right in the list, and I don't have to open uh, additional information in the waypoint list. And then a really big feature that I always forget about and therefore have not yet enabled, even though it's really silly, is you can turn on a notification when a change occurs to a cache that you have in an active trip. So if you've planned your whole trip and you've got some caches on there that might have not been found in a while or um, just a cache that that's you know on the trip that all of a sudden gets archived or gets temporarily disabled that happened to me with GC17 um, you will get an email notifying you that that has happened so if you're out on the road and you're not there looking at your trip you you know that the that the the you might need to make some adjustments <laughs> as you you continue with your day. And uh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that was that was a real world of insight when I had Gigastock on my trip plan. And every time they made a change to this horrendously long description <laughs> of the event, I'd get a notification and I could click the link and I'd get a side-by-side -side diff of what changed. It was really revealing. <laughs> Nice. That is kind of cool, actually, particularly if you've got a puzzle on your trip that maybe you're working on solving and somebody changes the page and all of a sudden it reveals a hint that maybe they didn't intend to reveal. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That, that is very cool. So those are your site-wide settings. Um, there are others. Those were just some that we wanted to flag for you. There are also settings within each trip. And for those, you can turn on an email notification if an event publishes near your route. Yes. Um, so I know a lot of us, when we're traveling out of town or maybe just away from home, we might want to try to see if there's an event nearby and there's a great way to quickly get that notification. You can, if you are adding, I know a lot of us that do county runs or DeLorme page runs, we mm. might add extra caches in there as backup caches. So you can put a lower priority on them. You might mark them as priority three just to quickly identify them as backups. Well, you can set on the trip that it will automatically exclude priority three caches from the routing. And so that way, 
it's not going to include them in your ETA and, and other things because you're really only going to go to them if you DNF uh, some of the earlier ones. Um, and then you can actually turn on an indicator for caches that are not included in the routing, which I find really useful because if I'm looking at my route and I'm trying to figure out why I've got a cache over to the left and my route is going to the right, I then quickly can see that, oh, it's because I've ignored that cache and that's why it's it's working that way. Because I try, I tend to pre-plan my trips sometimes. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm always up at three o'clock in the morning trying to finish the trip I'm going to leave for at 6.30, but I usually start well in advance. And so I may not always remember the, the little tweaks that I've done along the way. A uh, couple of quick things from uh, Tom Free in the chat, though. Uh, the change alert is also very nice for earth caches that suddenly get new questions. You get the difference of the uh, description. And going back to the uh, routing question about the different sides of the roads, he says if it's on a divided highway, the routing will have you turn around to get to the correct side, depending on where the coordinates are uh, placed in relation to the center of the road on open street maps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, the, the challenge is if you're power trailing in some of those backcountry roads that are not divided, right, <laughs> it's it's not going to know which side. And, and I definitely have seen some, at least out this way, where it's an out and back. So it really mm -hmm. would be more uh, time efficient to know, okay, this is on the right, that's on the left. So let me just do all the right side and then I'll get all the left side on the way back, even if it's not a busy road. So you don't have to worry about the darting across piece. Or you just leave your car parked in the middle of the road. <laughs> there is that option. <laughs> well, That's where you fill the car with as many people as possible, too. <laughs> yeah. Typically, when you've got that kind of power trail, they've got them numbered so you know which order to go in anyway. Yeah. But mm -hmm. There was one of those, I want to say it was in the West Bend area, uh, where we you had caches on both sides of the road, but you only got the caches going one way. But it wasn't a straight route. You had this big winding... Uh route to get all 101 caches or whatever it was in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it was exactly one you right. had to pay attention to those numbers or you were going to be in a world of hurt yeah yeah well and then sometimes you know you've got the geo art or the power trails where they numbered it based on just when they came up with the question mm -hmm. and who knows what what that actually means with respect to where it shows up on your route. So, well, and they've had, I've had uh, the geo art where it's numbered based on the position in the artwork, but you can't do your route based on that because it's totally off. Precisely. So, I, I, Rich, did you have any other things that you wanted to say on the uh, settings? Or not on settings. On? Let us launch into templates. You're, you're the wizard on those. Uh, I, I try to be. Um, I need to do more. <laughs> so w one of the other nice features on Cash Tour that I think a lot of people um, either don't know about or ignore are trip templates. And so the idea with a template is that it's a trip that somebody else has already created and that they've saved and made public for future cachers to use. And so a good template would have a starting and ending point with the waypoint sorted in between, as well as parking and potentially other notes and comments about the trip. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even just a few months ago, finding trip templates for the US was challenging because the vast majority of users were largely Scandinavians. Um, even though they still constitute the vast majority of users, the influx of US users has expanded the US templates. So uh, it is worth taking a look in that database. I know it's on the list of development to make that database a little bit more user friendly. Uh, right now, they're sort of ordered based on uh, most recently updated. Wow in um in that list but you know i think we talked about it in the last show that that we did on cash tour there's the butler county um donuts donut tr trail mm -hmm. that's uh, in there as a as a trip template and there are some others as well um i think so there there's a new geo tour that came that came out june 9th on the mm -hmm. east coast find your chesapeake um, I know I was working on, I think I did that one as a list because it's so spread out. It's from yeah. southeastern Pennsylvania down to southeastern Virginia. So a trip really didn't fit for that one. Um, but we, we've been trying to fill in some more. I've been adding templates for areas uh, around me. Yeah. And it's a great San Francisco one. Right. 
Exactly. And uh, one of the things that we do as ambassadors and moderators is we keep an eye on those templates. And so if we see archived caches come up, then we flag it for the template owner so that they can go and modify it so that you're not going to go into a template where there are all these archived caches and it doesn't really make a lot of sense for you to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one last general usage tip that we wanted to share with you is that if you have questions, ask. Um, as Limax said in his email, he was getting responses within 10 minutes. Um, and we really do try to be very responsive to support requests. And I know the show notes will have the links into the help center where you can just read through the user guides that are available, but also submit support requests. And there's also a link. We have a Slack channel uh, and it's that we have a couple of public work, uh, uh, workspaces in there. So you can use that invite link to join our Slack channel and people are almost always online to, sh to share and to offer advice and suggestions about how to accomplish something on the site. Um, and then we also have a Facebook user group and that's sort of users helping users. The moderators and ambassadors are in there as well, but really it's mostly users helping other users overcome the, some obstacles that they've already seen. You want to jump into some more workflow type yeah, tips? We're gonna, yeah, we're going to go back to creating and editing trips, which is really, we've, we've laid the groundwork for that. Now we got to get you going. Um, you, we talked briefly that you'd set your route up with the start and the end and start cherry picking into that as a typical scenario. Um, there's multiple ways to get the caches into, into Cache Tour. Um, you can, as I, as I said, use the Cache Tour Assistant in several settings, both Project GC and in geocaching.com, map and non-map modes. You can bring them in from bookmark lists. You can, there's a macro to bring them in from GSAC. If you have your, your material sitting in GSAC and you want to bring it into the trip. Uh, or you can just manually drop them in there. You know, you found a GC code, some of, it's on your cool caches or your bucket list and you just want to pop it in there because you know it's in this area. Uh, you can also bulk add caches as opposed to onesies. Uh, what you do is you get yourself a list of the caches you want to bulk add by GC codes and separate them with a space or a comma or a semicolon. And then you just drop them right into where you would put a single cache code. You drop the whole list in there and they're all added at once. And by the way, that blew my mind. I didn't even know <laughs> that that was, I knew there was a separate way to do it, but I didn't realize that in the simple add waypoint feature, you could bulk add. So that was yeah. a nice little find for me the other night. That, that's my doing. I tried it and it didn't work. And the next, in a few hours, Humphrey had it up and running. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, there's a separate area where you can also bulk add. If you go into um, edit menu with, trip info slash waypoints where you can change the do things like change the status of dates of your trips and other things. But there's also a place in there where you can add waypoints to your trip. And there's a bulk, there's a menu that says bulk add a whole bunch at once. And you just paste your list in there and hit add and they act the same way as putting them in that single field. And, and actually something else that's in that list or in that menu is a saved places mm -hmm. option. Ah. Um, and we had this later on, but we weren't sure where it would fit in. This it fits right here, uh, and that's really great because if you're if you often plan trips from your home or from a fellow cashier's home or a common meeting point, and you don't want to have to go and get those coordinates every time and paste them in, you can actually use them as saved places. And then also in that same menu where that bulk ad is, there's a saved place button, and you just choose whichever waypoint from your saved places that you want. Yep. Now, these, these are caches we're adding. There's some annotation kinds of things you can put onto your trip. You can stick a section marker in so you can break it into sections if there's some logical reason you want to do that. Uh, you can add comments into your trip entries. And you can put in warnings um, if that's something you need to warn yourself about something. And, and actually, just on that, I sort of wondered why I would ever want to do that, the warning or the comment. I was actually just planning a trip, and it's a hiking trip uh, for a GeoArt. And some of the trails happen to be out and back trails. They don't actually connect. They're sort of spurs. And so I actually put a warning at the top of each of those sections so that we knew when we were heading down there that they were out and back. Sort of a reminder to me that, look, don't spend too long at one point on your way out. If you can't find it, go find some others. And then on the way back, you can look for it again. Right. That's a good plan. Uh, 
the one thing that that I wanted and didn't see and grumbled about was I can't upload a GPX file. And Tom Frey said, oh, but you can use it, put it in via GSAC macro. Said, well, I don't use GSAC. Um, okay. He said, I said, he said, yeah, I'm in good company. Project GC doesn't support GPX files. Geocaching.com doesn't support GPX <laughs> files. Yeah, I'm not either. <laughs> well, so where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, there's a link in the show notes of a URL, HTML page URL you can point to, upload your GPX file to, and it will dump out a list of GC codes extracted from there, separated by spaces, ready to paste into one of the bulk ad places. So you can get around it if that's what your input is. Sometimes you get those because you know somebody else planned and sent you a partial thing for your trip that's in a GPX format. You just need to deal with it. Yeah, or someone else's uh, trip that they had done themselves earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you can also bring in things from bookmark lists. That is supported. So that can be a lingua franca. If you can publish it down to a bookmark list and then bring it back up again, it's another route to get it in. Let's talk about non-cash things, because there are some of those in your trip, like, oh, the hotel I start from, or um, where I'm going to have my lunch. <laughs> Remember to plan your lunch, and I sometimes forget this. Uh, there's a geocoding tool. Wait, 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 you stop and eat when you're caching? No, I drive through and keep eating while I'm driving. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop worried there for a moment. <laughs> Never stop moving. <laughs> there's a geocoding tool under the tools menu where you can go and type in, you know, holiday in Cincinnati or something like that. And odds are high that it will find the one you want and show you the geocache coordinates for it. And to the right of the map, there's a button that says, add this to my trip. And voila, it's there. So, yeah. great. Want to talk about sub trips there? Sure. And actually, one other thing to add non-cache waypoints. Um, sometimes when I'm looking at my trip or my routing in the map on cache tour, I see that there's an access point or a parking location that's not already part mm -hmm. of the uh, waypoints that are being pulled in from geocaching. Yep. You can actually, and this is awesome, you can right click on the cache tour map mm -hmm. right in your waypoint list where you want to add a waypoint. And there's a button there in the menu that says add waypoint here. And so you don't have to try to load it in Google Maps and find where that specific location <laughs> is and, and get the uh, coordinates and then copy them over. It does it all for you. Mm -hmm. um, and it really does help if, again, if you're trying to find parking or, or something along those lines. So sub trips. Um, when, when I first started using Cash Tour, I didn't understand the purpose of sub trips. Um, a lot of our users ask that same question, but why would I do sub trips? I can put a thousand waypoints in one trip. Why put them in separate trips? And then I realized how much easier it was to manage a trip by creating separate sub trips. And I typically, and I think most of the users that I've spoken to use sub trips as a way to divide up a multi-day trip. And it's mm -hmm. very easy if you over plan, which geocachers <laughs> are wont to do, um, if you over plan your, your trip and you end up with waypoints on day one that you don't get to, but you want to carry over to day two, it's very easy to then move those over. So it's not like you put them on day one and then you're done. Um, but there's a quick create sub trip. So if you've got, when you create your trip, you put in the dates that you intend it to start and end. And if it's a four day trip, you can click a little magic button and just like that, you've got four sub trips within that parent trip, one for each day. And again, when you're trying to do your routing and your starting and your ending points, I think it's much more manageable to have these smaller trips than to have this giant, massive trip that you're then trying to keep everything in order and sorted and where am I going to be and so on and so forth. Well, and I'm thinking with these uh, sub trips, that'd be a good way to handle like you're going to drive to this park and then go and do the caches in the park sure. is put all those caches in as a sub trip. Mm -hmm. You could. Um, there, we'll talk about changing the routing mode. And so you could do them all within a single trip as well. Yeah. The other scenario that came up from a help question on our community forum the other day, somebody said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm driving, doing caching all morning. I'm going to the airport. I'm catching a flight to somewhere else. And then I'm starting caching again when I get there. How do I, how do I route that? 
And, and the simple answer is you really do want a sub trip, even if it's all in one day here, because you'd start the sub trip, you would end the sub trip at the airport where you depart. You'd create a new sub trip starting at the arrival airport and finish your day. Of course, those could be in different time zones, of course, too, which is another good reason why you'd want a sub trip for that. Hmm. And, and I just scrolled down our uh, notes here and I see that we've been told that we're only getting through about half of them. <laughs> because yeah, I'll have to I think schedule people, another show. People are getting a little overwhelmed with the, the amount of information we're trying to impart um, on you. Oh, we can pick it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> did you want well, to talk a, about corrected coordinates? Or Daryl, did you have something say, that you wanted to jump in? No, no, I was gonna say let's get through the uh, corrected coordinates and then uh, uh, we'll probably have to save the rest for uh, the other sh uh, for another show. Okay. And, you know, we'll, we'll schedule that uh, in pretty short order here. All righty. Well, corrected coordinates are something that anybody who works puzzles knows keenly well about. Um, Kestor doesn't automatically get your corrected coordinates. You have to tell it to go get them. Um, and there's reasons for that. You may not want to have your corrected coordinates visible to people you're sharing your trip with initially. Don't give away the answers. Uh, and, and so you can explicitly, uh, in an individual cache, you can say, fetch the corrected coordinates if you think no, it has some. Or you can go on mass and say, import all the corrected coordinates for this trip. And it will churn away and come up with a list of the ones it found. And you can OK adding them all to your local trip information and setting the new, new coordinates. Or you can tell it to go find them in my cache notes, because a lot of people put their solution coordinates there. And it will prowl through your cache notes and propose those to be added as your corrected coordinates. So that's how you deal with them. Don't forget to deal with them, because otherwise you'll end up in some cul-de-sac somewhere wondering why, where the cache could be. And, and there's a nifty notif notification or indicator to let you know whether it has a corrected coordinate. Mm -hmm. You'll see a green pencil mark. Uh, or, or pencil icon in your waypoint list if that cache has a corrected coordinate. And if you're looking at the map, the cache icon will be shaded fluorescent green to let you know that that's at a corrected coordinate. So you don't have to guess as to whether the coordinates have been imported or not. And they also show in the printouts. Yep. That's nice. It's helpful. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So I know you well, want us to, st to stop because the, the routing gets into some pretty oh, yeah. detail, but I just do want to say one thing because it is a common oh, question. And um, a lot of people think that they can use Cache Tour to be this magic tool to identify the caches for them when they say, oh, I'm, you know, this came up with uh, Gigastock. You know, I'm heading to Cincinnati and I'm leaving from pick your place on the map. So if I tell Cache Tour that, will it tell me which caches to, to get? Well, no, it would be awesome <laughs> if it did. And if, if somebody knows the AI to program to just sort of, we would love to hear it because that would be, I mean, how easy planning would that be? But mm -hmm. um, you do have to manually add those caches. And then the question is, okay, well, I've got the traveling salesman problem. And we've alluded to this throughout mm -hmm. the show. So how do I figure out the best order? And obviously, if you can figure it out manually, that's great. If you need help in figuring out that optimization, Cache Tour has a tool that will do that. But there are two separate things that Cache Tour does. There's an optimization of the sort order. So you go to that through the sort waypoints feature. You pick your start, you pick your end, and then you can optimize it. It's largely dependent on the computer that you're on um, and how much it can handle. I wouldn't recommend trying for more than 30 to 40 waypoints. And depending on how many different roads and such there are around it, even that might be too many. Um, but all that's doing is helping you identify the correct order to target your caches. Cache Tour also will create the route. And that's what Rich was talking about earlier about that purple line that can get overlaid onto your geocaching.com map or project GC map. And so that's actually creating a route for you. And that's what dictates how long it takes you to get from cache A to cache B and so on and so forth. Right. And besides, planning the trip is half the fun. <laughs> you don't want the AI to do it for you. 
<laughs> well, sometimes I would like it to do it for me. I'd like the AI to help me with it, not necessarily, you know, right. figure and, it out. Because I and got stung by and that. And that comes before. back to the cash tour assistant being the number one thing, because that's where the AI really does help you by overlaying that route. Now you can use whichever your favorite project GC or geocaching.com is, and you can put in your filters, you can overlay a Delorme grid to see, make sure you're hitting all of the, you know, the right grid grids, counties, um, counties et cetera. And uh, Tom Frey in the uh, chat says also that you guys don't know this yet, but the corrected coordinates are also indicated in the app. Yes, I've been asking for that one. <laughs> so there we go. You, you've got another new feature. Yeah, he but, slips it in when we're not looking. <laughs> but just to let everyone know, we're only like halfway through their list of notes here. And at the end, they even have, if we're running short on material... <laughs> It's feature rich. <laughs> yes. So oh, it gives you a doubt. Of just how much there is to know about this. And people in the chat are even saying there's just so much great info here. They haven't even been typing. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a that. lot to digest. People are going to go over this one, I think, a couple of times just to get all of the uh, great info out. So thank you very much, both of you, for uh, joining us. Of course. And we'll definitely need to get you scheduled in for a uh, show. Uh, we're looking at probably end of August, early July, I think is our next availability. Yeah, I think September comes after August though. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you hit the reverse right. button. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn the, the order around. Exactly. Daryl, by the time we get them out that far, there will be more <laughs> that's been added and we still will not be able to catch up. Well, I think you're safe. Tom Frey is going on holiday. <laughs> oh, okay. We've got a chance then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we'll have probably a lot of questions to answer by that point as well. That's, yeah, that's good. True. Nice. Well, Plato Attic and R. Reagan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you, you know, you're coming back. So yeah. even if you didn't get everything out you wanted to, you got a chance. We're going to talk to you again. Excellent. Thank you. In the meantime, until we talk about Cash Tour again, Next week, we're doing a randomized show. That's one of my favorite formats. It's a bunch of small topics that we just kind of all toss together, put in a blender and see how it comes out. Usually it's like a smoothie. It's a smoothie of podcasting shows. There we go. August 2nd, we're doing road caching with C. My Shell. August 9th, we're talking about scuba caching with Merlin 1392. August 16th is another randomized show. One of those great smoothie shows. Check the Cashamaniacs website at cashamaniacs.com for more on the Geo Gear has including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cashamaniac shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on our website to support the Cashamaniac shows. Geo Gear has produced by Chris Stuffnauer and Daryl Wanberg. This show is copyright 2018 by Daryl Wanberg. All rights reserved. Yes, we're the Cash of <laughs>